Recent police data shows that methamphetamine use more than doubled between July and September last year after the country went into lockdown, and it's stayed comparatively high ever since, above monthly averages. This morning I spoke with Ben Burks ang the Deputy Director at the New Zealand Drug Foundation, and started by asking if wastewater data is reliable in terms of showing us the whole picture of who's using this drug and where. I think that's a really good question. The wastewater uh, data gives us a, a good indication, but it's a really, really broad brush picture. So what it doesn't tell us is um, any increases, whether that's due to more people using um, or the same people using more. Um, and also with wastewater data, we need to look at, a, at the long term to be able to see any trends because um, wastewater data tends to fluctuate. And what we can see when we look at this wastewater data over the past few years is that um, where we had seen a really massively disrupted supply chain for methamphetamine over the past couple of years due to the um, COVID pandemic, we saw a decline in methamphetamine uh, being detected in wastewater over the past couple of years. And what we are seeing in the data that came out in the last quarter last year is it's looking relatively similar to the levels of methamphetamine that were detected um, in, in wastewater pre-COVID. So what we're thinking about this situation, we need a little bit more data to be able to see where the trend continues, but it's looking like this may be a resetting of the market back to the, um, the levels of methamphetamine use as they were pre-COVID. Police updates cite kind of increasing international production of the drug, as you've said, and also the mental effects of the lockdown as reasons, possible reasons for the increase. So do you think that these kind of factors are the end of the story, or maybe can you elaborate on why this increase might have occurred? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, when, um, when we were having the lockdowns, we were speaking a lot with frontline providers and communities who were saying that some people were choosing that time to, um, to take a break, to reduce or cut down their methamphetamine use. Um, we, we also heard that some people were really, really struggling with their methamphetamine use over that time, some of them choosing to use more. Um, and um, I think that, that struggle also isn't to do with the the methamphetamine use per se, but a lot of the harm that comes from methamphetamine use are, is compounded by things like loss of income, loss of housing, poor access to healthcare, all of those things that quite a lot of the country grappled with over the past couple of years. And so what we really saw um, recently is that for those people who were using methamphetamine, then a lot of those other associated harms were really, really compounded. And a lot of our frontline alcohol and other drug support providers were feeling very stretched trying to make sure that they were supporting people um, while, while the whole country was going through a, a really uh, difficult time. So I think there's, as, as we start to see now, some of the um, the increases back to pre-COVID levels of methamphetamine use, we're keeping a really close eye to make sure that um, if we are starting to see uh, more people using methamphetamine who haven't been using before, that we're able to respond to that quicker. Um, or if these are people who have been using methamphetamine throughout and are using more and more and more, we know that they are already um, likely to be in a state where um, they've been struggling for the past couple of years with a lot of those other stuff, that income, housing and stuff like that. And what it really underscores to us is that it is so vitally important that we have health and social supports for people who use drugs in New Zealand and that we really invest in that health-based approach because a lot of those um, other associated struggles can be dealt with that way. And if we only try to arrest our way out of this uh, situation, we're throwing more things and more challenges that people will have without actually reducing some of those, um, those other associated harms. So there, there are providers for addiction and substance harm, um, as you say, and comorbid factors have obviously increased a lot over the past couple of years. Could you maybe talk about, in particular, the Te Ara Oranga programme operating in Northland currently or some other kind of mitigating measures and interventions that can help reduce harm for substance abuse? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, the Te Ara Oranga initiative in Northland is a fantastic example. Um, so that's a, a partnership between local communities, between police and health that really focuses on getting people support as early as possible. Um, so they have um, 
no thresholds for getting support where um, where some other drug and alcohol services, um, for example, to get into a residential uh, program, you you need to have a certain level of um, of issues from drug and alcohol use to be able to um, have that as the best option. They, this takes all those thresholds away. So the moment that somebody says they need some support for their methamphetamine use or, or want to talk to somebody about it, they're directed into a place where they can get somebody looking um, looking to support them really holistically, looking at pathways to employment in the area. Um, the first response of most of the police in the area um, through this initiative is to look out for what support options are available and make sure that people who are using methamphetamine get access to that support. Um, and what this has shown is really, really positive results where um, a recent evaluation that was released right at the end of last year found a 34% in reduction in harm from criminal offending. And they estimated a return on investment in that initiative of between $3 and $7 for every dollar that was invested. Um, I think the other point to highlight about that program is the massive disruption of stigma um, because stigma is such a, a big barrier to people getting support in the first place. And we know that in New Zealand for people who use methamphetamine, most of them wait between five to 10 years before they start um, looking for support around it. And that's a really, really long time for all those other issues to be able to, um, to escalate and become bigger. Um, so I think the, the reduction in stigma at a local level by meaning all of those local communities, police and health, discussing, exploring the issue, finding solutions to be able to make sure that people have pathways to employment, pathways to reconnect with their family and reconnect relationships um, and access to good quality healthcare as early as possible. I think that, in my eyes, is some of the, um, the golden examples of what we should be doing across the rest of the country, taking away that stigma, getting people health and social support as early as possible um, so that they can um, prevent harms from escalating. That was me speaking with Deputy Director of the New Zealand Drug Foundation, Ben Burks-Ang.